Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord. Thanks for another night's sleep and, and for another day of living. Once again, you have been faithful to your promise, Lord. Once again, another day of living. But how much longer, Lord? It sure can't be much longer. Take a look at this body. I look at it every morning and say, how long, Lord? Lord, I don't mean to sound patient, impatient, and certainly not ungrateful for the long life you've given me, but Lord, it is obvious that my strength is failing every day. It's hard just to get up and go to the temple alone and wait and wait. And my eyesight, it too, is failing. I can hardly read the scrolls anymore. Lord, you know how I love to read your promises, the promises that, that I've memorized over these years, that Messiah will come and that his coming will is so near. Promises like, behold, he suddenly comes to his temple and that when he comes, he will crush his enemies under his feet and make them his footstool. So, Lord, we wait. But how long, how long must we wait? I hear the Romans marching outside. It seems they want to crush us. The demands they make, Lord, are harder and harder every day. But, Lord, we wait. We trust. Some people are talking revolution. I don't like that talk. But I don't like the other talk where some are just giving in, Lord, for, for the sake of peace, they say. But how can you have peace if you just surrender at all costs? That's not peace. And Lord, Herod, that madman, why he'd kill us all if he thought that would stop us from overflowing that puppet kingdom of his. Who knows when he'll have his next temper tantrum and who knows what innocence will be slaughtered when he does, like he does every single time. Oh, Lord, I, I, how much longer? How much longer will we be under this oppression? It seems, Lord, like certain things must be happening. It seems the time for you to come is ripe as your word promises. Why, I even heard a rumor this week that some shepherds down in Bethlehem saw some angels and a, and a bright light and that they were told to go to Bethlehem and look for the Messiah. But I didn't hear. Did they find him? Evidently not, or he would certainly have come to the temple where he would be dedicated, where he would take over. Oh, who knows what to believe these days? People are so ready for Messiah to come, so anxious for him to be here, or at least for their trials and their problems to come to an end. Oh, then, there, Lord, there's that personal promise that you've given to me, that I will not die until Messiah comes. But again, Lord, how long? I don't know how much longer I can wait, how much longer I have to live, Lord. So I pray. Oh, Lord, every day, please, please come. What's that? Is somebody there? Lord, is that, is that you? Today? Today is the day. Messiah, Messiah comes. Oh, I must get to the temple. Come on, bones, let's get moving. Today is the day the Messiah comes. Well, Lord, if you're coming today, you sure have kept it a good surprise. There's no one here, at least no one who acts like they're looking for you. And surely if today was the day that there would there'd be all kinds of people. Today is the day that all of Israel has waited for, for the Messiah to come, to proclaim freedom to the captives and release from the darkness for the prisoners, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Everyone has waited for this day are they? Oh, there's no one here. There's nothing different. Oh, sure, people are coming in and out of the temple. They're praying and they're sacrificing, and, but it's the same as every day. They do a ritual. It's like it has no meaning whatsoever, no meaning anymore. They look like the bored, not worshiping the Lord. I don't know whether they know that this is the sacrifice for sin. It just seems so empty. <laughs> no wonder. Look at their leaders, the leaders who pour more burdens upon them, and the pompous priests and the scribes walking around in their pride. I don't even know if they want Messiah to come. They would have to change so much, so much of their ritualism, so much of their pride, so much of their substituting the falsehood for the real. Oh, and I can picture it. If you do come to this place, Lord, you'd probably send the whole lot of them out, throw their phoniness right out with them changing things completely. Oh, it's just 
It's just so empty, so meaningless. The Romans, they don't look like they're looking for anybody. Of course, why should they? They don't have the promises that we have. They have not read that Messiah will come. And besides, they're the ones who will lose their kingdom should you come. It's no wonder they don't want it. And Caesar, nor Herod, certainly they don't want to hear about a real king who's going to come and, and take their throne. Why sometimes I feel sorry for these poor Romans, always trying to cram as much life, if you can call it that, into their few short years because they have no hope. But we with the hope, what are we giving to them? How can they find hope in the midst of phony ritual that goes on and on? Lord, your coming must be today. Why are there not more people here? It's beyond my comprehension. Why would people not be here to greet the Messiah, to know him and to see and bow him? Oh, wait, there's old Anna. It looks like she's looking for someone. She's... Oh, my goodness, I tell you, she makes me look young. Maybe she heard the same message I heard. That, that must be it. That's why she's here. She has heard the Messiah will come. But just us two? Is there no one else? Just a couple of old, feeble? Wait a minute. There's a young couple. And they're obviously travelers. Why, look at the way they're, they're dressed. They've come from somewhere far, far away, and they, they look so happy. They're looking for someone, I, th I think. Yeah, sure they are. Why, maybe I'm just early, that's it. I'm just, I'm just early today, Lord. But you are coming. And soon the whole temple court will be filled with people singing your praises, praises to the Messiah. What's that couple doing? Why, they're just getting in line to buy a sacrificial dove. They're not here looking for a Messiah. They're just like everybody else, just going through the motions, just the ritual. And Wait a minute. These young people, they look so different, so happy. I thought they too were looking for a Messiah because even though they're obviously poor, buying a dove instead of a lamb, they just look different from everyone else here. So happy. They're filled with joy. And I thought surely that they Wait a minute. Why, my eyes are failing me again. That's a, that's a baby she's carrying. Sure it is. No wonder they're so happy. And that's, that's why they're buying a dove. Why, it must be her firstborn son, Lord. And she's sacrificing the dove to redeem him. A baby boy. Why, every mother in Israel is hopeful. Wait a minute. It can't be, Simeon. You're just not losing your sight. You're losing your mind. Look at them. They can't be parents of the Messiah. No way. Why, she's so young. And he, well, from the looks, from the looks of it, he's just a common laborer. Lord, would the king be born to such parents? And yet isn't he the God of the humble and the meek? And isn't he the father to the fathers? And doesn't he help the poor and redeem the helpless? I must get closer. I must find out. I must see this for myself. Oh, I'm dear, I'm sorry, dear mother. I'm sorry. Please forgive me for staring, but something inside of me, something outside of me was just telling me, dear mother, I know I'm just an old man and you don't know me, but could I hold your baby boy? Oh, I knew it was a boy because you're sacrificing. He must be your firstborn. Could I, could I please just hold him? Tim, Tim, praise God, this is Messiah. I have seen the Lord, the Christ. My very eyes have beheld him. I have beheld the glory of God. Oh, sovereign Lord, you promised. You may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you've prepared in the sight of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for your glory to people of Israel. Oh, dear mother, this young child will be the Lord of many, the glory of God. Even though he will reveal the light to all, many will reject his truth. That sword will pierce your soul as well. Thank you, Lord. Your servant may now depart in peace. <laughs>